Good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. So we're going to be talking about the patch notes for 10.2 and I want to make sure that everyone's ready to dive into 10.2 in 16 hours, 56 minutes and 16 seconds. So we got to get this done quickly and there's going to be a lot of changes I'm sure. I didn't really look at them all yet. I just kind of skimmed it briefly on my cell phone, saw a few messages that you guys posted in my discord server, but here's going to be the first thorough read. And I'm not going to dive too much into uh, like a lot of the little things that have to do with cosmetics and, and sort of in-game events. I'm going to be talking mainly about the card buffs and nerfs and all those different balance changes. So we have a new journey. I'm thinking it's probably going to be the Danny Line journey. It's um, Valentine's Day coming up, so it just makes a bit of sense there. There's a new love event kind of plays into that whole thing. Now, they've added a reward tree for Syndicate for the tutorial page. I've been talking about this. I've been doing a uh, Become a Pro series, and I noticed that they didn't have a Syndicate tree in the tutorial page. I think it's going to be good for new players to become familiar with this faction, right? Because the beginning of the game doesn't really show them Syndicate, and I think that's a little bit of a disadvantage for new players. They added the coin highlight that reminds new players to end turn. I think that makes a lot of sense. We oftentimes, like a lot of us are streaming or making content for the game, so we might get distracted. This helps kind of speed the game along a little bit more, right? You have your rope that you can use, but oftentimes we don't use it, so this just kind of helps end that turn quicker and uh, keep it going. Now, adjusted the initiative keyword to also include fee and spring. I guess it's good that they're being a bit more precise with what they're talking about here. It uh, leaves less margin for error or misunderstanding. We've got, here we go, the first change. So, it's a neutral card, Vigo's Muzzle, provision changed from 11 to 10, and the C's cap changed from 5 to 6. Guys, if you haven't seen this video that I posted maybe about a week ago, it was a precision strike control deck that used Vigo's Muzzle, and... I was feeling pretty spicy. I used this one in a tournament setting before and I really liked it. But if you look at it now, it's actually really good. So from 11 to 10, puts it at like the same provisions as let's say a Philippa. And the C's cap going up from 5 to 6 makes a big difference. And if you have a leader ability that can manipulate points, so precision strike or guerrilla tactics or anything like that that gives damage, then all of a sudden, this card becomes very attractive because it's a less conditional Philippa, right? You're able to go and take their big point swing and just, you know, bring it to your side or like their hero card or something like that. Think about it this way. You're playing against pirates and they have a crack on crate. Well, you can pick it once with leader and then just take the card with muzzle. It's pretty busted if you think about it. So... I'm really looking forward to this. If you haven't seen the Vigo's Muzzle in my Precision Strike deck, um, check that one out because that might be inspiration on how to get started with using this card in the next patch. Now, Skellige has Geddon the provision change from 13 to 14. Good. I think so. I think um, Battle Trance was fun. I played a lot of Battle Trance 9.6.1. Got a little worn out from it going into 10.1, so you'll notice I didn't put any videos out over the last month, give or take, that had Gedneth. Just because I felt like it was, it was almost like a, I don't want to say easy win, but I want to say you know, the the deck is really strong, and I think it was getting to the point where another provision nerf wouldn't be so bad to sort of stimulate some variety in the game in Skellige, right? So it's not going to break the deck; it's just going to make it a little bit more difficult. A little bit less greedy it just means maybe you take out one of the dwims you take out one of the specials and you put something in that's a little bit cheaper so this will still be playable 100 percent nut the callus uh, ability change to zeal order damage an allied unit by half its current power then damage an enemy by the same amount berserk five at the end of your turn refresh this ability so it's kind of interesting it um Gives it a little bit more to play with with the Berserk, right? I'd have to see this one in play to to really kind of give my opinion on it. But, I mean, some 
more support to the cell phone archetypes never a bad thing and you can see here restore is sort of playing into that as well provision change from six to five been seeing a lot of players put restore in cell phone decks so this could be a little bit of support i don't know if it's all the support that we need for that archetype to be really strong but um it's certainly a step in the right direction we have sigvald power change from six to seven provision change from eight to seven Ability change from whenever this unit is damaged by other abilities gain bleeding for the same duration instead. Order damage a unit by the duration of bleeding on self, then purify self. If it was an enemy, damage self by the same amount. If it was an ally, boost self by the same amount. Okay. I like the provision buff. I like, obviously, the higher power. You're... You're basically giving it a bunch of bleeding, so it's nice to have a higher base power. I don't know. Like, it's another card I have to see in play to see work. Like, I'm definitely going to be trying it out and seeing how it goes. But at this point, it's not, uh, it's not a crazy big difference for me. We'll have to see. On Crate Warrior, power change from 3 to 4. I mean, whenever there's support to any sort of warrior, I get excited about that. Even if it's one power change, maybe we can throw this uh, in, into more of our warrior decks. I'm definitely going to be doing warriors this patch. The Tursic Axeman. This one's pretty exciting. Um, I saw this briefly. Ability change to deploy melee damage unit by how much it was already damaged. This is really cool. Because, let's say something 6 power, we've done 3 damage we can just go and put this down and finish a kill. And um, we have a lot of stored pings on the board, on crate raiders, we've got boats, all that type of stuff. So we can actually just set it up quite nice. And it's a really flexible reach for removal. So I'm excited about this one here. And I'm definitely going to give it a try. We've got Northern Realms. There's, from what I briefly saw, there's the most changes within Northern Realms here. So to get into it, resupply ability change to whenever you play a warfare card, reduce this cool card's cooldown by one. So that's a little bit different, right? Because before it was refresh the cooldown when they had like a cooldown of one. So I, I guess they just sort of made it easier to understand, more or less. Refresh this uh, ability, yeah. Okay, it's not really different. It's good that they explained it this way and there's no like game breaking mechanics where it would like reset a shiny or something like that. Or shiny. Yeah, there we go. I said it right. <laughs> um, full test pride added resupply. That's nice. A little bit of support for siege there. Kaldar ability changed to whenever you play a special card, spawn a witcher student in the row. Adrenaline four at the end of your turn, spawn a witcher student in this row. So this hasn't really changed. The difference here is that before it's whenever you play like a warfare card, basically it would have like that resupply ability. Um, so now it's just whenever you play a special. So you can float Keldar on the board and just play specials and spawn students on the row. The problem with this though, is I think you'd still want to play it with adrenaline most of the time, because if you play early Keldar, then it gives them so much more time to remove it so the Adrenaline 4 doesn't kick in. And also, I found that when I play Kaldar right now, and I played a lot of Warfare cards in the same round anyways, I was overswarming. So you might find yourself in a spot where if you are using this in Witchers, that you run out of board space, which is actually a problem. And if you're playing the Shield Wall variant with cards like... Um, <laughs> it, it, it's a blank um, dude who rips shields off boosts self by 3 you know what I'm talking about um, you know it needs to go on melee so you have a problem there John Natalis goes on melee as well you have a problem there so you want to make sure that um, King Rogner is what I'm talking about right um, yeah you want to make sure that you don't cram your rows for those cards too we have Audrin provision change from 6 to 5 ability change from Audrin is a one-man crew. That's kind of cool. 
That's kind of cool. It helps set up um, the crew for, for like situations where it was really difficult to, right? That's the problem with North Realms a lot of the time is that these cards have crew abilities and then you know it's it's really difficult to keep them keep them coming in crew. So awesome to see. Trollolol. Trollololol. <laughs> armor change from two to zero, ability change from zeal, order, lose all armor, then boost self by the same amount. Whenever an ally uses its armor, order, gain one armor. So Okay. That could get crazy, if you think about it. I don't know if it's going to be seeing a lot of play, because it still gets answered quick. If this goes down, armor change from 2 to 0, that's the thing. So the armor is 0 when it starts, so it's going to be sitting there at like 5 points, right? Yeah, I, I'd be nerfing this, like, I, I would be taking a rebuke, uh, a payday, whatever the case, on this as soon as I saw it, right? Otherwise, it just gets nuts. But the problem is... The problem is it gets harder to remove if you have orders already, and then you play it, right? So, let's say I've got, like, four siege engines on the board, all with an order, all of a sudden now... It's got like a nice hat, right? It's got four armor on it. Yeah, that could be kind of tricky. Because when you play against Siege, you want to remove all these Siege engines, right? So then if you're preoccupied with something like this, then those cards live. And that could be kind of scary. So, so far, Siege is really getting the buff here. War Chariot added resupply. Like, all the better. Just another, another buff for Siege. Kind of... It's funny because we're all talking about how we wanted to see more support for Siege. We get more support from Siege, but I'm almost willing to bet that we're all going to start being like, ah, oh, they need to nerf Siege <laughs> by the end of this month, so we'll have to see. Battering Ram, ability change to resupply, order on melee, move self to the range row, order on range, move self to the melee row, and then damage the highest enemy unit by three, so that hasn't changed. Crew, choose an enemy unit to damage. That's really cool. So, this helps us have more specific damage and more specific control. Because oftentimes, what people will do is they'll have their highest unit on their side of the board. Maybe with a shield or they'll have it with armor. You know what I mean? Something like that. And we don't really get the most value from the battering ram. In this case, we get to choose what we target, which is very helpful. And this will help us complete kills for something maybe that we need to take out. Because the three off this and like two off maybe just other held pings, then we've got removal there. So that's really good. Caraballista ability change to resupply, order range damage an enemy unit by two, cooldown three. Crew at the end of your turn, gain one armor. I like this. Um, that, that's that's kind of cool. You know what I mean? Keeps the engine going for longer. We've got the armor that's just going to be continuing to gain. It's a, a subtle difference, but it's a difference, and it could make a difference, right? Now, Carrick Frigate ability change to resupply, order, spawn a volunteer in the row, cooldown 2, crew set cooldown to 1. Okay. So, the problem before was like, before we'd need crew to make it work, right? You'd get the first order, then you'd need crew to make it continue to work, and people would just keep damaging that soldier to the, to the left side, and we just wouldn't get the value from it, right? And then it became very expensive. And beyond that, you still have to worry about keeping this card alive. So, I kind of like the cooldown. Crew set cooldown to one. Yeah, so, I, I mean, basically what they're saying is, if it's crew, it'll work like it did before. If it's not crew, then 
it'll still work, but every other turn. And I think I'm willing to live with that. That for six provisions, it seems fair. Reinforced Ballista ability. Well, Reinforced Ballista adjusted the tooltip to fit with the change to resupply. Sure. Rivian Pikeman ability changed to order damage an enemy unit by two. Death blow reduced the cooldown of all units on this roll by one. Inspired always triggered death blow. That sounds kind of scary. You just stack the row and put this down. It's almost like having another leader charge, right? Because um, oftentimes when you're using the stockpile leader, a lot of these cooldowns that you're messing around with have a cooldown of one. So you're basically just resetting the whole row like a leader charge, less the uh, volunteer that you spawn, right? Interesting. Siege Ladder Deploy replaced with Zeal Order. I like that a lot. I like that a lot because um, oftentimes you might want to play this card. You know, but you don't really need to use it yet, right? Like, you can anticipate a problem, but the problem hasn't happened yet. You can just be a bit proactive with this and use it when the time comes. That's fine. Siege Master. Power change from 3 to 2. Armor change from 1 to 0. Ability change to when you play Siege Engine, summon self from your hand to the right of it, then draw a card. Wow. That's kind of cool. It fixes a, a little bit of a inconsistency issue that Northern Realms has, right? And with accessibility to Raffords being a bit more difficult, right? Before you could take it off Amphibious, now people are putting in Hensel just to get the Raffords Vengeance and then having to have the Raffords Vengeance survive in order to get their Thins and then, you know, that's great and all. But beyond that, it was just maybe John Natalis and Amphibious for the Thins. You know, a lot of times you wouldn't really want to go play Dun Banner or something like that in a Siege deck. Oftentimes you'll see people adding commandos for that reason of thinning, but this now just lets you draw a card and makes it a little bit easier. So I like that you'll probably still see people use the Sentry and Envoys, but this is a, a nice addition that I think would help out Northern Realms quite a bit. Siege Tower, ability change to Zeal, Order, gain Vitality 2, Crew, boost self by 2 instead, cooldown 2. So they've added the cooldown to it, which is actually pretty cool just acts as a point slam. I don't know if I'd ever go that direction necessarily. I I think that there's a lot of other things we can do with the siege, but maybe this will just be a good point slam. I don't know. Five provision. Yeah, you know, maybe they get up pretty tall. We'd have to definitely see it, but when I'm playing control, I like playing control, if you know what I mean. Not having like boosty engines going on at the same time most of the time, but if the value is just there, then you, you kind of have to respect that. So, Squoytail's got a few changes. Etriel and Muraliga, provision costs change from 8 to 6. So, I haven't played these cards since very old school Precision Strike just because they got extremely power crept. I think that. For six provision, they're going to see more play for sure. I don't know if they're going to be entirely worth it because there's just so many good core options right now for Squoytail. However, I definitely think they could see some play. This could be maybe uh, a much needed addition for Harmony to be able to give you better quality tags to proc the Harmony. Uh, this can be good for Precision Strike, of course, because you can have some good control options in there. I'd be willing to try it and see how it goes. I think 6 provisions is a lot more reasonable than 8, so not bad at all. Francesca, counter change from 3 to 2. That's actually pretty terrifying if you think about it. Especially as well, self counter change from 3 to 2 as well. These cards are going to be very easy to pull off. 
and they could do quite a lot of damage. I think if you're playing with control, this wouldn't be too difficult to answer. But if you're proccing her off orbs, then that could be definitely pretty wild. You know what I mean? There's not really something you can do about it. It just, it's, uh, you can't answer it, right? It just happens so quickly. Now, Great Oak power change from 8 to 9. Provision change from 13 to 12. Again, I'm looking at some of these changes like, okay, maybe Harmony gets a little bit of a buff, right, with these. And then you see Great Oak power changed. This could be going into anything, right? You could stack a row with uh, Nature's Gift and put this down. You could stack a row with Precision Strike and put this down. Pretty much anything you can think of, really. Um, Squirtle doesn't have much of a problem doing that. And all of a sudden, one more base power, one less provision is very intriguing. Because we have the 9 and we put it at the end of the row, let's say it boosts by the amount of the row. I mean, that's not a bad play for 12 provisions at this point. Right? These two changes are actually significant changes, so you don't want to sleep on those changes at all. And moving on to monsters here, we have no changes. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm tired of seeing, like, all these crazy monster decks going around, so uh, maybe we just put them on the back burner for the month and it's good to go. Now, Nilfgaard has Emir Van Emerus provision cost change from 11 to 10. This card was seeing essentially no play, so I think that it would be interesting to get a bit, a bit of a buff and see if it takes off. There's a lot you can do with the spying and all that type of thing, and I think that it would be kind of nice to see. With Philip power change from 5 to 6, ability change to deploy if you control a vampire, gain zeal, order, give doom to an enemy unit if it already has a status, lock it instead. If it already has more than one status, poison it instead. Cooldown one. This could get kind of ugly. Like I could see a lot of decks going around and using will o' wisps and all types of stuff, gaunters, and just like killing doomed units off. But um, I wonder if it'll take off. It's very flexible. The problem is, we often can't control it if it already has a status lock in instead. Right? So if something has like... A shield, we, we can only lock it, we can't give it doomed. If it has more than one status, so if it has a shield and defender, then we get to poison it. I'm definitely gonna try it out. It's one of those things that could be extremely useful, or just not very useful, and it's kind of up to playing it to find out, I think. With Swear's power change from 3 to 4, it's a little bit of a buff. Um, might see some more play. I had no problem playing it at 3 if the meta like allows it, if there's a lot of things that are in that 3 range that we want to seize. Well, they're talking about base power here, but I'm just talking about playing the card in general. So base power 4 helps a little bit. I'd be interested to see if there's a lot of 3s and 4s we need to take. Seeing Sove, though, is kind of nice. Because we can go and we could seize that, for example, with the Swears. Vachier ability changed from Order, Lock an Enemy Unit to Conspiracy Season instead. So they added the Lock Clause to it. Which is kind of nice, because sometimes you have Vachie and there's nothing locked so you can't seize it. At least in this case, you can go and you can lock something, right? Or use it to seize as intended if, if we're prepared for it. So that's pretty good. I can't even tell you the amount of times where I've had Vachier and I just wasn't able to seize anything because nothing was locked. So, really cool that they actually fixed it a little bit. I don't know if it's going to see more play, but at least it has that better condition. Ability change to whenever an enemy unit gains spying, damage units adjacent to it by one. That's actually kind of cool. It's like a little engine, sort of like a pseudo mage infiltrator engine that's just going off. So now it matters where we put everything 
before you just jam cards on their row and just kind of hope for the best. Now it involves a little bit more strategy, which is kind of nice. Then more Lehem Servant ability change to deploy copy all statuses from an enemy unit to another enemy unit. Boost self by the number of statuses copied. I could see that playing in with the whole <laughs> Philip thing, right? Um, I just don't know how much you're really going to get out of it. How many times, like, I still have this contract I'm working on that's like, have five statuses on an enemy unit or something, or your unit in one match or whatever. Um, it's very hard to get, like, a lot of statuses on one unit, if you think about it. More than three is is getting pretty difficult. So, I don't know. We'll have to see how that one goes. Jackpot provision change from 13 to 12. We're moving on to Syndicate. This is helpful. I don't know if it's game changing. Because we've seen provision nerfs already, right? And it hasn't made a big difference. One more, I don't know if it's going to make a big difference. You look at leaders like Fruits of Yizgith that have, like, I think the lowest provision allotment in the game with exception to maybe Lockdown. And it doesn't really feel like it matters all that much. You have strong cards, you have strong cards, right? Um, it's good to see at least they're trying, right? It's kind of uh, a small change, at least if we're going to be playing against the same old King of Beggars type deck then they have one less maybe gold card to work with or they have to sacrifice something in the mid range to accommodate their upper end cards so i'm hoping that it makes more of a difference than i think but for now i just i don't know about that off the books provision changed from 16 to 15. charges changed from three to four okay so we sacrifice one provision we get the two extra coin I almost like that better. It gives you a lot more reach if you want to use leader and do something the same turn, right? Think about it this way. Let's say I wanted to full leader Philippa, right? Well, before we'd have a ceiling of six, now the ceiling's eight. Or if I wanted to like... This is bad because you could full leader Savola. Because the... The, the 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 amount, right, the attribute amount goes down by one with this leader, so that's kind of crazy if you think about it. Um, off the books might even be like the new go-to for Syndicate because it just gives you that much more reach. King of Beggars changed power from three to one. That doesn't mean anything, really, because you're not playing King of Beggars for King of Beggars. You're playing King of Beggars for the refund that it gives you on all the coins that you've tributed, and then the deck thinning principle. So, the fact that this comes out for two less power doesn't change the issue that we're facing. And they tried to sort of pile that in with the jackpot provision nerf. I, like, it's an, it's a little bit of an effort to change it. It'll make a subtle difference, but I don't think it's going to make the world of a difference. I think that if you're playing Syndicate and you're doing this type of deck, you're going to find a way to make it work still. Basically, and we move into some game bug fixes, which is obviously good to see, you know, that they're putting in an effort to make the game run a bit smoother. Wait, I just want to see if they have one about the uh, the shield. They don't, you know, when the shields are bugged on the board, they should really fix that. But um, I guess that'll be in the next patch or something like that. So let me know what you guys think of the patch notes, guys. What are you looking forward to the most? What are you dreading the most? And what are you excited to try? I'm going to be doing deck guides every single day until we get comfortable with it. And then I'm going to be doing more experimental deck guides after that. I think I'm really excited to try uh, more Skellige and more Northern Realms and more Skoyotel. Those are going to be probably the main focus of my content for the next couple days.